Todd, if you're in agreement, I will see you next year. Not in agreement. Yes, 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 yes. All right, all right. Awesome, awesome. Well, our next panel is going to give you another dynamic conversation. They'll be talking about the role of blockchain in shaping sports fan engagement. I'm going to welcome first to the stage Jennifer De Brogli. If you could please come to the stage. And Jennifer is with Qatar Media Corporation. Please give her a warm welcome. And we have Petri Barbosa with Matt Chain. Oh, you want to do everyone else? OK, all right. We're, we're going to just switch this up, guys. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us here for uh, the Proof of Talk's very last panel discussion. So I'm quite honored to be here with you, and we're going to try to make it as fun and interesting as possible. So first of all, I'd like to ask a question. Um, my first question is, how many of you like music festivals? And how many of you have been able to pay for every single thing in a music festival with crypto? Well, then you're up for a nice surprise tonight. We're going to find out how our first panelist is making this possible. So welcome to the stage, Sven. <laughs> so Sven is actually um, bringing crypto to music festivals, the top five music festivals in the whole world. So he's got a lot of great insight to share with us. All righty, now question number two. How many of you have participated in, have been an Olympic athlete? Nobody? Well, there's one person in the war room that has. And how many of you are diehard Olympic fans or big sports fans and, and want to be recognized for your fan loyalty? All right, well, stick around because our next guest has got a lot to share with us, and he can answer yes to both questions. This is our good friend, uh, Pedrix Barboza, who is using AI and blockchain to level up the fan experience. And just a little bit more about Pedrix because. We're not going to talk about his company during the panel discussion, so I want to talk about it right now. Um, he is a Brazilian Olympic gy gymnast, serial investor, and now founder of MatChain, the decentralized AI chain for data and uh, identity sovereignty. All righty, question number, this is the third and last question for now. Um, question number three, question number three, ah, okay. How many of you have ever bet on a sports team? And how many of you love to gamble or like it a little bit? <laughs> well, our final panelist, Peter from Greece and America, is he has made a platform to bring gambling using crypto to the masses. Welcome, Peter. All righty, so we're ready to get started. Um, we're going to talk today about the role of blockchain uh, shaping sports fan engagement, and we're gonna take this into five different uh, categories, the first one being the industry. So, uh, Patrix, we'll start with you. Um, tell us how we're making, we're bringing Web3 to the fan engagement in the sports industry. Absolutely. Oh, sorry, Peter. <laughs> Peter, let's start with Peter. Okay. Thanks. Um, so I think Web3 and sports, sports is a huge industry, global presence um, across both mature developed markets uh, and emerging regulating markets. And the fan base, the sports fan base, a huge cohort of them, as a surprising amount of you actually, um, I saw do engage in sports betting. So we are definitely leveraging the sports industry to bring attention to Web3 and to demonstrate how not just the technology, but also some of the principles of Web3 via an app like Six Sigma Sports uh, can definitely have an impact on the industry and change the current user experience for the better. Excellent. Uh, Pedrix, did you have anything to add? Sorry? Yes, would you like to add? Uh, yes, please. <laughs> 
uh, blockchain and sport in general is perfect combination. Blockchain gives you ownership, it gives you uh, access that you don't have uh, on today. And again, uh, I'm not a sports company. MetChain is an infrastructure layer. It's a purely blockchain to provide infrastructure to every single kind of dApps and apps, regardless of your industry. But sports is definitely a topic very close to my heart, like uh, she presented very well. Thank you so much. I've uh, been 20 years uh, on the sports professional arena. And I imagine how my career could have been better supported if I had blockchain before uh, to raise crowdfunding on sponsorships or for even loyalty for people that really want to support my career in many different ways. Uh, and this is a topic that uh, on the future of match, I some really definitely want to, us to grow and have some strong plans to keep growing uh, on this area. Um, and yeah, I think there's a perfect combination of blockchain and sport in general. Thanks a lot for that, Petrix. Now, uh, Svet, I'm just thinking one of the what I see is one of the big use cases could be in terms of ticketing and ticket scalping, because as somebody who sometimes can't get a ticket in time, and then you can only get it on the black market and the price has gone way up, um, could that be a blockchain use case? Yeah, for example, we are coming, we are owning the, the group of the entertainment, it's, and we have a couple of festivals, and one of the festivals is already top five in the world, and let's say we are quite have a big database. We have over 3 million of users per year. And we, come, we are coming from Web2. And just imagine that we come to this solution at this point that we need to scale up. And we only can scale up with a blockchain. That meaning we will can be more secure, more speed up, more, more fast access, and so on. That's why we're also in Web3 now. OK, great. Um, now let's think a little bit about um, the athlete or the artist and how Web3 technologies can really enhance their life or make their lives easier or more secure. And so, Petrix, maybe we can start with you. Um, back in the day when you were an Olympic athlete, I guess like decades ago, you didn't have access to this technology. Um, how would this have changed your life for the better had you had access to this? And um, coming back to today, how is Web3 getting the athlete or the artist closer to their fans or their sponsors? Yes, absolutely. Um, blockchain in general is very inclusive, right? It doesn't matter which industry you're coming from. I came from sports, coincidentally. Um, but blockchain, that's the beauty. Uh, when I met blockchain and crypto, I was still very active and I was supposed to be training for Tokyo 2020. It was right after the Olympic Games 2016 and when I moved to the United States. When I moved to the United States, I was converting Brazilian reais to dollars, and I said, mm, this will not work for so long. What should I do? By that time, I already had my graduation in economics and finance and a lot of passion for adrenaline risking in general. So I decided to research what I have in the market, if it's Forex, if it's trading, or whatever it is. And then I found the crypto blockchain. I read the Bitcoin white paper, uh, and then made a lot of sense for me made a lot of sense, uh, literally, and even by the time, like, my family works in very, very traditional finance. Uh, by the time, my brother was working at Goldman Sachs, and then I called him and asked him, like, what did you think about it? Is crypto good? Is Bitcoin such a thing? He said, like, Google pawns the scheme and call me back. I Google pawns the scheme. I never called him back. Six, seven years later, I'm here, invested in 250 protocols uh, as an angel investor, as a VC founder, and today a founder of MatchChain. And like I said, my background was for sport, but blockchain is inclusive, right? We all have different backgrounds over here, and it's a, it's a new ecosystem and a new uh, place that we all can live and have a new career and have ownership about what we're good at. So. I'm, I'm passionate about about the water industry in general, yes. Can I just jump in with a uh, quick question on Please. ticketing? Uh, because uh, I'm kind of curious, as I thought about what we were discussing earlier, um, is transferability of tickets something that you are actually improving or changing with the benefit of being build, building an app on blockchain? Because I, I mean, recently I actually paid through the roof to bring my son to his first football match and I ended up having someone season tickets. I was Emma Jones for an afternoon. And I, you know, I think I can envisage this being kind of ripe for making people more comfortable with transferring and developing a secondary marketplace for season tickets and, and other types of tickets as well. Yeah, for example, we have 
at one festival, we have uh, one guy that sold his ticket 110 times. Right. <laughs> it's just one guy goes to the festival and another 109 guys was scammed and so on. Yeah, this is, will be a huge improvement about the selling the ticketing because just imagine uh, also the organizers of the events, sport events, festivals, uh, any concert, but whatever, uh, many are buying the early tickets and after they are selling these tickets and organizers also want to make some money from this one like for royalties and it will a lot and we will see also a lot of things like security sync when it's, you can transfer the tickets like nft or another method and so on and it's helping a lot like really a lot okay, cool a uh, last oh i, I want to just add a point to this I don't think it's bad, and, and not that he's my personal opinion, that basically he's came to the other ones because he paid 100 times, 110 times more expensive. The problem is if it's the founders of the owners of the event doesn't get the part of it because you already got 110 times as well the revenue if it's on chain. Because really, what is the real price of a ticket? What is the real price to be in that game with your son? Like, can, how can we price things right? Prices should, like even a token or a meme coin, it's how much it matters for you, how much is important for you. So if you have a fair marketplace that the founders, the artists, the athletes will be paid no matter what on a second, third or fourth sale, this is what matters. But if I have the FOMO and I have one ticket available that day, even if maybe I'll have another 10 by the end of the day, but I'm not certain, and I have a, a seller that I want to sell 10x more, that matters to me. I will buy 10x more. Right? So it's really about how do we price things. And blockchain gives you the freedom to you price tickets at your own, own pace, at your own ability or willingness to be part of, as long as the artist, the athlete, or the company get the fair rights and the royalties. So back, back to uh, Svet. Um, we talked a little bit about the athlete and how they can be supported using Web3 to have a better relationship with sponsors, fans, whatever. What about for emerging artists? Aren't you working a lot with DJs and, and new artists at your music festivals? Yeah, well, so we are owning one of the uh, platforms, like I said, it's first marketplace in the Romania, and it's named the Ecstasy, and we are exactly a selling experience. Let's say we have a couple of the same uh, story behind of the childhood and so on, and I also played say sport athletes and so on, and after it's going to the gig style, you know? <laughs> yeah, uh, the idea is uh, we also have, a, like, uh, for example, experiences with uh, artists, like a backstage or meet and greets and so on, and uh, like my colleague said, it's all the time exists a form that somebody wants to buy it and they are sold out like in the minutes. And the cool things about the blockchain that you also can transfer this, this ticket or maybe you want to make a GIF or you, if you want you can sell it more higher price and so on and so on. Yeah, but it's a lot and a lot of form exists about these tickets around the artists. Great, and now um, let's talk a little bit about um, how, how Peter, you are seeing, well, based on our previous discussions, how this could really be, uh, Web3 could really be the way to finally achieve mass adoption through the music industry, the, ga the gambling industry, the sporting industry. These are, these are industries that are massively popular among normal people. How can we leverage this to bring Web3 on board to these populations? Yeah, well, I think we were, we were discussing revenue streams before. Sometimes we're talking about new revenue streams, sometimes, uh, you know, improving existing revenue streams. Sometimes we're talking about changing the whole business model. I think in, in our case, what we're doing is actually changing the business model of sports betting. We are opening up the profit center itself to engagement by our users. We're aligning incentives and giving them a chance to actually capture some of that value they help create. And I think also to Patrick's point about uh, creators and, and athletes and uh, keep retaining some of that value that ultimately their actions drive, I think is, is a key underlying theme um, that can be applied to all of our industries. And now let's have a little uh, deep dive into your fan bases, because all of you have got fan bases. And what are you doing to grow the fan base using Web3? And what would be, to the audience, your uh, biggest tips if they want to grow their fan bases as well? What's like, what's like your best Web3 tool to grow the fan base? 
Well, I'll, I'll, I would love to learn from Patrick since vet here. Um. <laughs> I, I can start. Nobody has the perfect formula or the recipe, but we all have to do our own tactics and keep trying, keep improving. Uh, what I love, especially about your business, your business and the philosophy and the core from Match Chain. Again, we are not a protocol itself, we are infrastructure, but we have a way that we approach the projects for our ecosystem. And we are all about experience. Everybody talks about mass adoption, everybody talks about using the chain on board millions, but you're also talking about quantum computer, TPS, fast power, which the mass adoption don't know what they're doing or what they're gonna be using. So we all should be focusing on the users, like Jeff, like to, Jeff Bezos like to say on Amazon, right? I focus customer services, because it's real. So what the users want, they don't wanna change the experience. They wanna do the same thing that they do in the daily life blockchain or not behind, doesn't matter, mm. right? You check your application when you download on Apple Store, if it's Java or Python behind, no, I'm a Java Maxi, not touching this Python shit, right? You don't care, blockchain is just technology, it's a solution for a problem. If it's a solution for a problem, find experiences, find industries, find applications that need the solution, embed in the back, the end user shouldn't know, doesn't have to know, because he want to have the same experience. But maybe now they have a wallet on that a new application. And that wallet will start to generate rewards for him. So we start to get curiosity, and you onboard masses and masses. Again, right now we already have 12 million registered users across the applications on our chain, 7.9 million monthly active users on our testnet, because we create applications that they know how to do it. Right, I have like um, real influencers across APAC, uh, over that thousand, that they coach, they prepare people how to use their application, how this business model can improve their lives. The same business model that our parents did their whole life, to sell whatever thing off chain. So you, on the onboarding process as well, it's not on Twitter AMAs, guys. The Twitter AMA will be just my personal opinion, but it will be just the same audience, right? And even here, what are we doing here? We are trying to collaborate with each other, learn more, see how we can grow and get inspired. But we are not onboarding the masses on this conference because if you're already here, you already have interest in Web3. Mm -hmm. So we, gotta, we need to get out of the bubble, build experiences that people are used to have, they don't have to be prepared, and then the curiosity will come. Uh, that's how we did it so far. <laughs> and he have a real word case application, betting everybody knows how to bet. There's a blockchain behind. Ticketing is amazing onboarding process as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I love what you guys are doing. It's perfect aligned with the way that you think. Awesome. Uh, now back to uh, Svet. For, for you, um, when you have festival goers who might not be tech savvy, which I imagine are a lot of them, what would be some strategies to help onboard them into the Web3 world without them being a little bit afraid, thinking it might be too complicated? Yeah, we are like saying in the, our team, our, let's say our solution is more Web.5 because we are like bridge between Web2 and Web3. <clears throat> and like Patrick said, and Patrick said it's exactly like user experience of onboarding the user is most crucial in the, these days for Web3. And the technology that will be easy to adapt, it's only if it's seamless, that meaning you can install it, your application, register easy without the pain in the ass, let's say, something like this, then you, your product is going up. That's why also we're coming, for example, we are created our platform, not because we just somebody want to use it. No, we created the platform because these, we needed, we have uh, issues with our platform and we wanted to engage the users to be more and more easy to use and this is most crucial f for any product, I think so. And by making it easier to use in your festivals, maybe becoming more popular because it's easier to buy tickets, this and that, how has this affected um, revenues from your festivals? It's uh, also, it's, let's say, if it's more easy to use, just imagine that the sales is go X2 better. That meaning one, of, one from three users from the visits will buy the tickets. Also, the engagement in the festival, for example, it will be speed up. That meaning you want to, be, uh, to buy a beer or the burger, you want to go top up, put a bracelet money, mm -hmm. and if you have everything of, have on your phone, you can do speed up very quickly. Also, access to the festival and so on. This is helping a lot, like huge improvements. So now back to Peter, the strategist here. Is there a way that we could somehow bridge in gambling and gaming into the festival goer world? I mean, I'm just uh, thinking out loud here. 
Yeah, well, I wasn't ready for that question. Um, <laughs> I'm sure there is. I think we'd have to put our heads together a little bit more about that, yeah. <laughs> we'll chat after. <laughs> okay, so next, a little, just want to make sure I'm not forgetting anything here. Uh, so let's talk about the future. If you had a crystal ball, where would you say, well, actually, not having a crystal ball, you've got, uh, what, 12 million users, you've got 3 million users, so, so what are the trends you're seeing right now in what's coming up in Web3 in the, in the music and sports industries? What's coming up? That, give us a scoop here for the, for the audience. Well, from our side, what's coming up? So, our app is going to be launching, the main app is going to be launching towards the end of the year, September, October. So we are going to be delivering a new experience that isn't in the sports betting industry right now. We are going to let users engage as the house on our app and tr bet traditionally as they would in the directional way. We are also delivering a level of transparency and information that is absent in much of the market right now. Some of that is, is basics around just uh, delivered through self-custody, delivered through having the logic on chain. And we're further leveraging that in order to kind of develop new features like Be The House and provide our users with a visibility into the actual action of a sports book that right now is, tends to be extremely guarded uh, in, in, in centralized sports books and, and by the operator. So I think for the sports betting industry, that's a new experience that is coming later this year. Peter, will, will uh, gamblers be able to um, uh, add in a stop loss? Yes. So there will be oh. more. So I, I, I wouldn't say a, st a stop loss in that sense, but mm -hmm. with our new feature, Be the House, there will be a, um, advanced risk management tools coming, which will include um, users being able to put up capital and provide liquidity to a sports book to markets uh, and actually do that in, in a way where they're defining the band of pricing that they're, and odds that they're willing to provide that liquidity. So similar to what's concentrated liquidity uh, from the DeFi world, yeah. Nice. Okay, Petrix, how about you? Tell us the future. I don't know the future, but the future <laughs> we must build, right? So uh, just going back to this vet point, when I mentioned that blockchain is a solution for a problem, he had real problems on his big events. And if the solution, you implement the solution, you onboard the mass people, you make his business better, you optimize, you cut a lot of middlemen, right? Uh, we are, like I said, the infrastructure, uh, AI chain. Just thinking about your business right now, Peter, we're talking, you're gonna need to understand the betting behavior of your players as well, right? You have to take, uh, it's a betting platform in sports or any other gambling style, you just need to make sure that you avoid the cheaters, you avoid people uh, doing different behaviors just to have the gaming result manipulator, right? Uh, AI is a great solution, right? And talking about the future, if I had to make a prediction, uh, we are AI chain, and we believe that every single app in the future or app in the future will have AI inside. At mm -hmm. center point, as he should be implementing AI, as he should implement AI to understand better, like what people are drinking more, what are their behaviors, how can I improve my experiences? So my future prediction is that every single app and app in the world will have any AI feature, and AI needs data, mm -hmm. data to be trained in the users, onboard the users in a seamless way, that in a way that people doesn't feel that they are, have been onboarded, create the data, have the most powerful AI. So my users can become easily his users, and that's the beauty of blockchain. We are not fighting who have more users. This is not a football uh, Champions League competition, right? We really collaborate. And that's the goal, and that's why we are uh, onboarding mass adoption users from outside, not aiming to steal the user base from Solana or other chains. We mm -hmm. want to bring from the outside and provide to every single other ecosystem because we have a lot of quality projects, and they need users, and they need utility. So AI, data, uh, I think is the most important intersection for the future of our industry right now. Thanks, Patrick. And now... Back to Svet, you've got an, a, a festival, an upcoming festival with more than 500,000 people who are going to attend. Um, tell us about the future of these festivals and once we get Web3 like totally integrated into them. 
I hope it will be the bright future. <laughs> <laughs> And so on. Yeah, like but what, I, what will the user experience be like? Like, just take us through a festival goer showing up at a festival. Yeah, it can be like exactly like Patrick said. Uh, it's most interesting that we already make uh, with AI, with data prediction, that it, what will we use, the beer, what they drink, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we speak it before. <laughs> 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 and uh, the future, my opinion, it will be like if everything, if the user or the client have a smooth experience of any event, then it's, it's really cool. That meaning it's don't stand on the lines on the access, it's entering site, it's paying everything easy, it's buying the ticket, if he wants or she wants to sell the tickets, it's easy. Like, let's think, it's our experiences and everywhere, like jump with parachute, go to the event, it's most important one. We remember this stuff, and we are not remember the Netflix and so on. Yeah, this is my opinion, the experience is most important for us. Do you think that being able to predict all of these things, then it, there will be, I mean, I'm an ecologic, ecologist at heart, so will there be a positive ecological impact, thanks to Web3, on all of these different industries? Yes, it's possible everything to optimize and so on. Like, all the process, if you're optimizing, all the time you have a better result. Excellent. All right, guys, would you like to ask one another any questions, or any questions to me? Or questions, questions from the audience? Uh, yes, I mean, if for it, the sports betting market is is pretty big, especially by consumer app standards. So we have 370 million, up to 370 million people betting on big cricket matches in India. Um, the U.S. market now is, is approaching 30 million, I think, engaging with sports betting apps last year. Brazil is also a big market that's in the process of regulating. And actually a huge amount, uh, well, huge, relatively, a large percentage of, of even business that's currently in mature, well-regulated markets finds its way to the offshore market. Like 10 to 15 percent of the EU market share actually goes offshore to what is a uh, mixed spectrum in terms of quality of operators. So, you know, the, the market size is, is large. I think it's ripe for, in an industry that hasn't seen much innovation uh, in a long time, I think with a blockchain, we can leverage technology to actually change the user experience and, uh, and improve it for the better. I forgot the second part of your question, though. Or was that, that it just? Yeah, I, I think directly the technology drives some of the innovation that we mentioned in terms of transparency, in terms of data that's available on chain. Uh, I think on the business side, I, you know, I'd say our, our willingness to engage the user in a way that kind of brings them in on the side of the sports book and opens up the, the profit center, opens up the upside to help them capture some of that value. Um, in addition to betting traditionally, I think is something that hasn't been modeled this way before. So. And a question to the audience. With eSports, traditional sports, music fans, music lovers, musicians, musicians, and people who like gaming, would you all agree that these together would be the ultimate perfect vehicle to bring Web3 to the masses? All right, so I would like to give a big round of applause to our panelists who are making this happen. So thank you, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you, Sweat, and thank, thank you, you, Peter. And a thank you to all of you who are also champions in our, in our ultimate goal to take Web3, the benefits of Web3 to everybody. It's win, win, win. Together, we're all gonna make it. And thank you so much for attending the very last conference of thank Proof you. of Talk. Great job. Thank you so much for being present at our last panel. We are going to have some more programming on the Da Vinci stage, so feel free to go there. But thank you for joining us here at the Polka Dot Mona Lisa stage, where we covered a breadth of information. And looking forward to closing it out with you 
on the Da Vinci stage. Thanks again.